Hey guys, so you want to play Call to Arms, but you don't know where to start at. How do you move? How do you shoot? What do we do with the zombies? How do I pick my survivors? That's where we're going to start at. We're going to start at the very basics of the game. We're going to start with how do I build my team? So what we're going to do is my opponent and I are going to choose a point value for the game. Uh, for this list, we're going to pick 300 points, and I'll explain that a little bit more as to why I picked that number as we're building our team. So stop messing around. Let's go down to the table. All right, so we've decided that we're going to go with 300 points for our list. So now comes the really big decision. Do I want to be the good guys or do I want to be the bad guys? Now, Called Arms allows you to be a neutral party, and they're kind of wishy-washy, and they can be good or they can be bad or whatever's convenient for them. But there's only one right answer to this question. Of course you want to be the bad guys. So for this, we're going to use the Ruthless Faction cards, and we're going to start to build our team out of this. All right, so inside this Ruthless Faction pack, we're going to get a lot of bad guys. So we're going to get a couple variations of the Governor, and then some folks from Woodbury itself. Then we'll get some of the Marauder figures, some of the Scavengers, the Hunters, some other characters there, and the Prisoners. And there's some extra guys from Woodbury there in the back. So, now that we've chosen me bad, the first thing we're going to do that we've chosen our team is to pick the leader for our team. So, essentially any character can be a leader. What you're going to look for is down here in the strategy point section. You're going to want someone that has any value in there. If they have an X, like Eugene here has the X, he can't be a leader. He can only be a member of the army. So for our list, we're going to start by choosing Brian Blake as our leader. You can tell because he has a white down here in the strategy points. Our right, so now we chose Brian to be the leader of our group and we're going to be the Woodbury army we can take this Woodbury Army Faction Special Rules card. Now this is going to grant uh, members that bear the Woodbury Army Faction. So if they have the Governor logo on their card, they can benefit from this card. It also shows us down at the bottom what type of special equipment we're allowed to take for being part of that army. And we'll explain the equipment a little bit later on in this video. But for now, just know that we're part of the Woodbury Army. We're going to take this with us. Now included in that Ruthless Faction box, you're going to get some other uh, faction rule cards. So if you choose to be the prisoners or the hunters, uh, they have their own corresponding card as well, and you can take that for them. But we're taking this one because we're the Woodbury Army. All right, so now we've got a couple things going for us. We've chosen our point value, which is 300 points. We've chosen we want to be bad guys, which is going to be this R down here. Now, the R stands for ruthless. If he was a good guy, it would be an L for lawful. And then the other alignment is going to be neutral, so it would show an N. And we'll explain those here in a little bit. But for right now, just know that we're going to be the bad guys, so we are rated R. Now your leader choice is going to be very important, because he's going to determine, or she's going to determine, a lot of the characteristics for the rest of your army. And we're going to refer to those as the facts. F-A-C-T-S. So that's going to stand for your faction, your alignment, and your character type. And all three of those things are very important when you're building your army because they all play into it. So with facts, like I said, you want to remember the A is for alignment. That's what this R down here is for. Now in Call to Arms, you can't mix good guys and bad guys together on the same team. So we can only have R or N because again, neutral can go either way. So we can have R or N on our team. Now if our leader was neutral, then we could have either Lawful or Ruthless on our team, but still not both. You can only ever have good guys in neutral or bad guys in neutral. And it's important to remember, when you start to mix the neutral characters in, they're what are called allies. Anyone that doesn't have the same alignment as you is going to be an ally. The face next to the R icon down here is for faction, and that's the F part of facts. So we have factions and alignment. Now the faction is going to be important because you're going to want to have as many people with the same faction icon in your army as possible. That's going to create a lot of good synergies and things like that on the tabletop that you're really going to want to look for. Now certain survivors will have a like a hash mark right here 
which means that again, they're not part of any specific faction. So you can take them in your group. Or you can take other factions if you want to. If you take a different faction icon, those are also allies. Now, with the allies rule, let's say that I want to have a really bad team and I want to have Chris be part of Brian Blake's Woodbury army. I can do that because they share the same alignment and you can see that he's a member of a different faction, however, so he won't be considered part of Woodbury's army, but he can be on my team because he's still ruthless. Now, with the different faction, if Brian goes to use one of his leader-specific abilities or faction-specific abilities, Chris won't be able to benefit from that because he's not part of my primary faction. Now, if I want to take Scott Moon on my team, led by the governor, he can go because Scott is neutral, so he can go along with the Ruthless team. And this logo here means that Scott is not part of any specific faction. Now when this logo is on the card, these people become part of your primary faction. So Scott, for this game, is going to be part of the Woodbury army. Now he can also benefit from any of the leader specific abilities or group specific orders that Brian sends out. Characters with this icon are considered followers, not allies. Allies have a different faction icon. All right, now the last part of the facts that we want to know are going to be the C and the T for character type. So we have faction, alignment, character type. So Brian's character type is going to be a support character. Now this is important because not more than half of your team can be the same character type. So certain characters are bruisers, they're better at melee combat. Some characters are marksmen, they're better at shooting. You can only have up to half of your army as the same character type. Alright, so this is going to be our team here. So we're going to have a Woodbury army led by Brian Blake. So you can see that Brian here is our leader because he has his white strategy die over here on this side. And then we're going to go down the facts. So for our faction, we have the Woodbury Army faction here on Brian. And then we also have it on Bruce, Wes, Gabe, Gloria, and Lily. And you can see that on Eugene, he has the, the X symbol. So Eugene will be considered part of our primary faction as a follower. So he'll still benefit from any rules that we have. With our alignment, everyone is going to be an R or an N, right? So because Brian is an R, Bruce, Wes, Gabe, and Eugene are also ruthless, and then Gloria and Lily are neutral. So they're allowed to be on our team as well. And then for character types, Brian is support. We have three bruisers, Bruce, Wes, and Eugene are all bruisers. Then we have a support, a tactician, and a marksman. We have seven overall characters. We can have up to three bruisers. So that's what we're allowed to have. That's what we're going to take. Now, point-wise, remember, we're at 300 points. All these characters add up to 288 points. So that leaves us a little bit of wiggle room so we can throw out some equipment to these guys. All right, so with equipment cards, what you're going to want to do is look at the back of the card. If it has a faction-specific icon on the card itself, it can only be taken by members of that corresponding faction. So for this card here, you can see it has the governor's icon on the back of it, which means it can only be taken by members of the Woodbury Army faction. Now, if that icon's not there, it becomes a common piece of equipment, and it can be taken by any person from any faction in the game. Now, on the front side of the card here, what we're going to look at is the point value to see if we can still fit it into our game. So remember, we're at 288 points out of 300. So if we take this, we'll be at 298. So we're still good there. And then behind it, you can see the word rare. And that means that this is a rare piece of equipment, and we can only take one of these per army. We're going to take this piece of equipment and give it to one of the characters from our team. All right, so there we go. We have our army laid back out here on the table. We were at 288 points. We give Lily the tear gas grenade. That takes us up to 298 points. Now the thing to keep in mind when issuing out equipment is you can't give someone more equipment 
than what their base point value is. So I gave Lily a 10 point piece of equipment. I can't keep giving her equipment to get her up to 43 points or more. So now that we've got our team chosen, we've given them equipment, we know the facts about our team, we're ready to take them and deploy them on the tabletop. So the next video we're gonna pick it up at the start of a game turn.